Good morning, everybody. My name is Maria Alga Ruiz. I am EASA Drones Program Manager, and I'm going to talk to you about the US space concept for the purpose of the workshop on icons piquity. It is important that you understand uh, why we need the electronic conspicuity for manned aircraft that enter in the US space aerospace. The first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is why we need US space at all. Well, we need US space in order to allow for more uh, drone operations, um, more complex uh, in BB loss, and, and more complex in terms of. Uh, density and uh, in terms of uh, complexity. So we need U.S. space to ensure safe integration of uh, drones in, in, together with manned aircraft in the aerospace. This is also to fulfill the U.S. strategies on sustainable and smart mobility. We have also fulfilled EASA uh, priorities and EASA strategy on safety and efficiency. And uh, it is important also to clarify the roles and responsibilities of uh, all the actors in the US space aerospace in relation to ATM, UTM, UIS operators, and man aircraft. So what is it that it is the US space concept? So the US space is a set of services that they are provided in an automated and a digital way for a man aircraft systems. The US space is composed of the US space aerospace, where the services are uh, provided. The US space aerospace is a volume of aerospace which is designated by the member states on the basis of a risk assessment considering all the aspects of safety, security, environment, and also uh, with regard to uh, um, privacy of the citizens. And the other element of the US space aerospace are the US space services. Today, we have four mandatory US space services. That is the, the network identification, the geo-awareness service, the traffic information, and the flight authorization service. And we have two optional services, which are required or not, depending on the result of the aerospace risk assessment conducted by the member states for any specific US space aerospace implementation. That is the monitoring service or the conformance monitoring service and the weather uh, information service. The US space regulatory framework is composed of four pieces of legislation. Three of them has already been adopted by the European Commission last year. So those are regulation 664, 2021, which contain all the requirements for US space in relation to the US space aerospace, the US space uh, services, the common information uh, service provider or service provision, the UIS operators, as well as uh, the requirements for certification of the US SPs and the common information service provider, as well as the member states. We have also regulation 66. Five, which contain the additional requirements for a traffic service providers, which are derived of the implementation of the US space aerospace in control aerospace. And we have regulation 666 2021, which is the purpose of today's workshop, which uh, contain the requirements for electronic conspicuity for manned aircraft when they fly in the US space aerospace. And this regulation amend the standardized European rules of the air and add additional requirements for the manned aircraft flying in the US space aerospace. We have also the common information service in, in terms of financing requirement. This will be part of the CES2 uh, plus uh, regulatory package. So how safety is managed in the US space aerospace? This is an important part of the US space concept and is to understand how safety is managed and how all the risks are mitigated in the different implementations of US space aerospace. As you can see in your uh, right hand side, so we have when US space aerospace is uh, implemented in control aerospace, we have the NSP who has been designated for that control aerospace provide air traffic services to manned aircraft as always. The USSP provide 
U.S. space services to unmanned aircraft in the same volume of aerospace. Usually they are segregated, but for whatever reason, a manned aircraft need to enter in the U.S. space aerospace because of uh, emergency or because of uh, weather or because they need to alter the trajectory. The NSP and the traffic control initiate what is being called dynamic aerospace reconfiguration in order to deviate uh, and to segregate or separate the trajectory of the manned aircraft and the unmanned aircraft. When we have in uncontrolled aerospace on so the left hand side, so what you can see is um, we have a flight information service that provides flight information service to manned aircraft. We have the USSPs that provide US space services to the unmanned aircraft. And uh, what we have here is that the manned aircraft needs to be electronic conspicuous. So they need to have an electronic conspicuity devices that my colleagues will explain later on what is it about in order to provide information to the USSPs that is able to provide traffic information to the UIS operators in order to avoid conflict with the manned aircraft in that portion of aerospace. The same will be applied to aerospace class ECHO because the BFR is not controlled by the ATS providers. As you can see, when we take the, uh, the mid-air collision model of ICAO, we have in the strategic mitigation layer, we have the US space aerospace which is designated on the basis of a risk assessment. We have in the pre-tactical mitigation layer, we have the static geo awareness information, which is given to the AMAN aircraft system and the flight authorization, so to the, to the AMAN aircraft uh, uh, operators in order to enter the US space aerospace. And we have the tactical mitigation layer, which is the dynamic geo awareness information, which is derived the of the dynamic aerospace reconfiguration, the traffic information, and the conformance monitoring whenever it's implemented. In that way, we mitigate all the safety risks in all US space aerospace implementation. That concludes my presentation. So I hope that you have um, understood the concept of US space and the reason why we need electronic conspicuity, which is the purpose of this workshop. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good day.